watched you start the season off uh, with a bit of an injury, um, and the race in Madrid was maybe one of the gutsiest performances that I've ever seen. You went into that race uh, maybe not as fit as you would have liked to have been, but you still came away with a victory, and some of your competitors, I think, were blown away with the heart that you had after being away from the sport for so long. Can you talk about what it is that sort of drives you when you get to a race? Because there's probably, for most people, an expectation of you maybe being top ten, and you came away with the victory in Madrid. Um, I'm not sure. That, I, I, I hate this question. Um, I get asked a lot what drives you, and you know what motivates you every day. And I don't know what it is. It's just you know being outdoors. And it's kind of what you do. And you know, if someone says, "What makes you want to win a race?" As well, you know, what's the point in being in the race if you don't want to win it? So you know, it's a bit of a stupid question, but. Um, yeah, you know, you stand on the start line and at the end of the day it's a race and, you know, you do everything you can to try and win that race and I think Madrid, you know, we got lucky and I saw an opportunity to do well in the race as a, a break on the bike and then, um, you know, once I knew I was in with a chance of winning, I, I probably I ran and gave it all I could really and I was running for second place for the entire run and um, I, there was a minute to go and I thought, right, you know, you've only got a minute and you might as well just go all out and that's what I did and um, I was pretty surprised really when I had the gap. Because you have... Uh... Because you've missed uh, a few of the events earlier this year and don't have the points to become the world champion this weekend, is there a, a special opportunity for you where Javier and Jan might be having to watch each other all day long? You have uh, the opportunity not worrying about a world title, but the chance to be the grand final champion on, on Saturday. Um, yeah, possibly. Uh, but I, I think um, you know, they're both incredible competitors and I you know, have the best chance of winning the titles by winning a race. So. Um, you know, I don't think they'll be looking too much at each other. And, you know, they'll be concentrating on racing to the best of their abilities and trying to win the race. Uh, of course, the opportunity exists, but um, yeah, I, I can't see it being massively different from any of the races. You know, me being able to escape. Next question for for Javier. Having watched, uh, this is now the 22nd World Championship for ITU, the second time in the Grand Final. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that sort of amazing seven days, first of all? Um, literally having seen probably 5,000 triathlons over my career, I haven't seen a man break 30 minutes twice. Uh, in spectacular fashion, you, the man to either side of you at with home course advantage, you had the fastest run and able to win in both their home countries. Talk about just that importance for your confidence uh, after having missed the first part of the season with injuries. Well, yeah, those two weekends were fantastic for me. Had really good performances, but um, I know that I've seen other athletes running very fast too. These two guys and run two in other races, also under 30 minutes. So it was good for my confidence um, and a new motivation, you know, for this grand final to see that I'm there and I'm in second place, still have a chance to win the title. I know it's not easy, but um, yeah, after a tough time at the beginning of the season with with the injury, um, now I'm happy. I've been training really well. So I'm looking forward to, to the race tomorrow. Just, just try to give my best again, and, and so let's see what happens. If we take a look out, and obviously a huge amount of media here for this uh, grand final, can you talk about maybe how important the experience of going through the Beijing Olympic Games were for you? Because the fourth place finish obviously wasn't what you were looking for out of those games, but when you're standing in front of live cameras, tremendous amount of media, high expectations, that does sort of harden you a bit, and uh, maybe can you talk about the benefits that the three of you guys have having come through that Olympic experience versus maybe uh, some of the younger guys coming up who will get that first shot when they get to London. Yeah, I think it was a great experience. You know, I think Olympics are, are different than all the other races. Not the race, the race is the same, you race against the same people, the same race you, you had raced before, but uh, everything around, you know, everything's a bit more maybe complicated you know, for training and to do, to do everything as you would like to do, but um, yeah, I think I've learned from, from that race and hope for the next uh, Olympic Games in London it will be something something good for me. The man next to you, uh, Jan Ferdino, had that incredible sprint for those of you who are fortunate enough to either be there live in Beijing or to watch with that gold medal performance. With the gold medal performance. And I guess my question, uh, my question to you, Jan, to start off, initially, you have the opportunity this weekend to do something that no man has ever done in 22 years of the sports history, and that is to be a world champion 
and an Olympic Games gold medalist. Uh, you're a historian, you appreciate the sport. Can you talk a little bit about just how unique that would be to be the first man to do that? Only Emma Snowsill on the women's side uh, has been able to do it. Um, well, is this one now? Here we go. Um, well, as athletes, I guess we're always striving to be on top, to be the best we can be, to win races, to you know, achieve records to break records, but then uh, to be the first man to do something has um, got a whole different motivation to it, and um, I guess that's what this season has demanded. It's been a very long season, and um, I think uh, the thought of being the first ever to do something, to possibly do something, is something that's helped me along in a great way, and uh, it would certainly be a, a childhood dream coming true, um, sort of, yeah, being the first man to ever do it. Can you talk a little bit about, uh, I've had a chance to be in, in Germany and I now appreciate uh, that triathlon in your country has gone to a very high level that, uh, you know, lots of people know who you are from magazines, etc. And if maybe some people are coming from smaller countries where the sport is still getting uh, just its roots. Can you talk a little bit about just how your life changed after Beijing and how consistently the sport and you have been in a, a very high level visible place? Well, Germany, I'd say, is definitely a, a real triathlon country. We've got um, sort of the two different camps, I'd almost say, of long and short distance, and each of them are becoming more and more popular. Um, there's lots of people that think, you know, I can do a swim and then a bike and a run. You know, let me try and put it together. And I think that's what makes triathlon very unique for, for the spectator as well as the athletes, that they can actually do it and they can participate <coughs> in the sport. And um, that's what's getting our numbers up. And uh, I think with with any country and um, with any region in the world, obviously with um, idols or with people who do who have success in the sport, um, the sport itself is promoted, and people get the idea: oh, this might be a cool thing. Let me try this. And we've de definitely had that in Germany. Um, to the extent that I now go to the supermarket and uh, the cashier asks me how many points I need uh, in order to be world champion. Um, that's, it's, it's very great and I really do appreciate it, but it's definitely something I have to learn to deal with um, because as Javier was saying earlier, we're becoming professional athletes. We're not just athletes who strive for the performance, but we've got a lot going on around the, the field of play and around training. And um, I think that's definitely something the series has also brought about. Next to you, uh, Emma. Just a quick question. You, you certainly know that there's mathematics being played this weekend. Uh, I'm sure that you and all of your coaching staff have sat down. How much is it going to be that you're looking to be on the top of the podium versus that you want to make sure that you're ahead of Andrea at the end of the day? Um, yeah, we actually haven't spoken about the point yet. I think it more just comes down to the fact that for the females, if you want to be world champion, um, well, particularly for us three, we have to win the race. So. I think thinking about points too much might be a bit of a distraction, but um, yeah, it's, being on top of the podium is definitely something that I'd love to do. Um, I enjoyed last year being world champion, and I think it would be even sweeter second time around. So yeah, I think Cup Sunday, that's definitely what I'm out to do. Andrea, you've been probably the most consistent athlete all year, closest to the podium on the most number of occasions compared to the two women beside you. Um, talk a little bit about how you've been able to be so successful from Sydney right through here to Budapest. Healthy, great performances. What's been the sort of secret recipe? I don't think it's been a secret. It's just been the, my training and my race schedule and my travel. Everything's been, everything's gone really well this year. And so I've come, gone to races in good form and my running's going better as well. But each year I've been improving. So all of that together has put me and a good position to be um, up there in the race. Last question to our lead athletes, and we'll open things up to the crowd. Uh, Lisa, talk just quickly about your world title, because certainly that's changed your life in just the last few weeks, winning the World Sprint Championship in Switzerland just a few weeks ago. Oh, well, it's, it's been quite a fantastic two weeks behind me. Uh, I came down to the sun, not really thinking about the race too much. Um, ended up having a great day, and got the response back from Sweden and they were amazed by the world title and the media you know, suddenly woke up and realised triathlon is a pretty cool sport and got a goal is you know, pretty successful. Uh, I went back to Sweden last week to do a 10 k running race and some, some testing and the, the media response and the, the amount of time we get in, in magazines and, and TV coverage now is fantastic and I'm hoping you know, we're going to get some smaller releases coming up in the next couple of years.
The uh, last question to the man with the most uh, Olympic medals at the table. Others of you may surpass him at some point. Uh, Dr. Moses, uh, maybe just giving a sense for some people, they may not clearly understand what Laureus is doing, uh, why people of your incredible stature have spent so much time donating your efforts to youth and to the development of sport, and maybe how you see triathlon being a small part of that big success. Well, our organization, uh, Laureus World Sports Academy, our basic goal is to use sports as a tool for social change. And we've done this by having collaborations with different projects and different organizations like ITU, um, our, our relationship with them around the world. And um, we've uh, got a lot of superstars in our organization that do a lot of very good things. Um, ITU is very unique in that. And, uh, we have a great group of, of athletes, uh, great competition, three-phase competition, which we can all relate to. And uh, we like the idea that you're bringing in the youth uh, and uh, that we can uh, develop some projects to talk about um, kids of ch childhood obesity, diabetes, health and fitness for young people, and everybody in general. I think the sport lends itself to it uh, directly, and we're happy to have a relationship and be proud and are for very proud to be related to ITU. Triathlon was very fortunate that Dr. Moses was in Sydney and so part of uh, the IOC's uh, review committee and I know that he played a, a large role in the sports growth and development so we, we do appreciate you being here. I'd like to open questions uh, to the media if there are a number of questions and at uh, that point if there aren't we'll get a couple quick shots of the athletes. I know they still have to get out on the course today. The men